Hello and welcome back to this series on OCR and Python. And these are all tutorials geared for those who have no programming knowledge or very limited programming knowledge in Python. In this part of the series, part four, we're going to be working with a new problem. Now in the last videos, in part three of the section, we looked at a problem regarding an index. How do you take an index that looks something like this or like this or like this, the one that we actually used, and get OpenCV or computer vision library in Python to recognize the columns and so that we could extract those columns and then better OCR them with PyTesseract. In this part, part four, we're not going to be working with an index, rather we're going to be working with a sample MGH page or the Monumentii uh, Germaniae Historica. So this is a critical edition of a Latin text, and it presents a good challenge for us. I'm not going to be talking about Latin at all, so if you can't read this, don't worry about it. I'm using it because this is a very complex, stru complexly structured uh, piece of textual data as an image. Our goal is going to be to OCR this, but we have some very clear challenges that I want to illustrate here in the first part of the series. Challenge one is that there's a lot of metadata on this page. Now, as we're going to see in just a few minutes, when I OCR this without any kind of pre-processing, one of the things that's going to be apparent is everything on the page is going to try to be uh, is going to be OCR'd, and this is going to result in kind of jumbled messes, specifically what we call over here these marginalia or these little things on the left hand side which indicate scriptural quotations or scriptural allusions. These are the portions of the Bible that are being referenced, so Ecclesiastes, um, Book 5, Chapter 8, etc. Um, the other thing that's going to be throwing this off, and I never know the no word for these, are these number numbers on the side, which delineate the line of the text so that you can um, correctly cite not only a page number up, uh, down here or wherever it's at up here, but also the actual line itself. The other thing that's going to be throwing off OCR as we're going to see and keep an eye out for this is this down here, this footnote. So what we're going to be doing in this series over the course of the next few videos is figuring out how to OCR this page, some of the problems with that page, kind of the, the main content of this video. And then in the next video, we're going to start trying to isolate the main body text. So this bit of information right here from Delicatissimo all the way down to Amiche. Now, the other thing that we're going to do, I'm sorry, all the way down to the end of the footnote. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to try to isolate out the footnote. And we're going to do that using OpenCV by trying to identify this horizontal line. And then the other thing that we're going to do is because we don't want to lose all this valuable metadata, these scriptural citations on the left-hand column, we're going to try to OCR and capture that left-hand column separately. And all of this is going to be building off of the key concepts that I covered in part three of this series which looked at how to uh, look at that index and use uh, bounding boxes and contours in OpenCV. And a lot of what I've covered in this video is going to be a little bit of a repetition of that or in this series, but we're going to do some slight modifications to what we covered in part three so that we can better capture the elements and the features of this new uh, problem in part four. So let's go ahead and jump right in. What we're going to do now is we're going to import PyTesseract. We're going to be importing CV2. These are the two libraries that we're going to be working with. PyTesseract is how we OCR everything, and CV2 is how we get the image into the right format that we want. So we're going to first create an object called image. This is going to be equal to cv2.imread, which is going to take one argument, and that's going to be a string, which is going to be the location of our file. So we're going to say sample underscore mgh underscore two dot, uh, we're going to say actually uh, just mgh.jpg. The next thing that we're going to do is because we're going to want to make a copy of this for later on in this part um, of the tutorials, we're going to make a second copy of it. That's going to be equal to image.copy. That way we can have two different files. You're going to see why that's going to be useful going forward. Just do it for right now. So once we've done that, we've got the file now loaded in the memory. We're going to go through and do a couple things that I did in the last video. So we're going to create a grayed out image of it, which is going to be cv2. Uh, CVT convert the color with a capital C. We're going to convert the image, which is the first argument, and we're going to specify how to convert that image. We're going to convert it with color underscore BGR to gray. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to blur that image like we saw in part three. If you don't know what I'm doing right here, go back and watch part three of the series where I talk about these in a bit more detail. Essentially what they allow for us to do is to gray an image, uh, blur an image, not blue, 
blur an image, and then um, do some thresholding to try to isolate structure in the document. So that's what we're doing right now, CV2, Gaussian, Gaussian blur, which is going to take that grayed image, and we're going to do a couple different things here. We're going to specify the size we want to blur and zero. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a threshold image. And this is going to be cv2.threshold. I always misspell that. Blur is what it's going to take as its image object. We're going to specify kind of some of the ways in which we're going to be doing the threshold. So we're going to do thresh binary inverse uh, plus, this is where we're going to do the Atsu method of thresholding. And I covered uh, Atsu and thresholding in detail in part two of this series when I talked about um, when I talked about OpenCV and basic methods for image preprocessing. We're going to execute that cell. We got no errors, so I'm happy. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the kernel, which is going to uh, be the size that we kind of uh, morph everything that allows us to actually identify key structure in the text. So we're going to say get structuring element. We're going to do cv2.morph rect. And then finally, we're going to specify the size that we're going to be making this kernel. For this video, we're going to be doing 350 because our chief goal in this video is to capture the main block of text. And this should be enough to do that. Next, we're going to dilate that image by using the CV2 dilate uh, method. And we're going to say thresh kernel. So that way we pass the kernel size to the threshold image. And we're going to just iterate over it one time. And it looks like I've got an error. Um, I have spoken well or speaking while writing does not bode well. Uh, it looks like we got one more error. What are we seeing here? Thresh dilate kernel. Ah, here we are. There we go. Now everything works just fine. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to take that image and let's go ahead and kind of see what that image looks like. We're going to put this in temp. We're going to call this our sample. Uh, we're going to call this, uh, let's call this dilated. And we're going to call that PNG. And that's going to be our dilated image. Let's go ahead and save that so you can kind of see what it looks like. And it's going to be under sample dilated. And this is what that image now looks like. Uh, it's not supposed to be legible here. It's supposed to be allowing us to delineate and identify blocks of text or structure within a document. And if you notice, we've achieved that. We've got the main block right here, the footnote down here. We've got these side numbers over here. And we've got uh, the Ecclesiastic, Ecclesiastes scriptural citations on the left and the top uh, header information up there on the right or on the top up there. So now that we've got seen what that image looks like, let's go ahead and try to grab grab those uh, features. And we do that by making contours. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to uh, grab all of that information. So let's go ahead and do cons, CNTS, that's the Pythonic way to do this, CVT2 or CV2 dot find contours. And this is going to allow us to work with that dilated image and it capture the main body block of text. External cv2 dot chain approx simple. And then we're going to take those contours and we're going to say cons zero if length of the cons contours is equal to two else cnts one. And this is going to allow us to actually, this next bit of code is going to allow us to actually sort out all these contours so that they appear in uh, the correct order in which they appear on the page. So we're going to use Lambda here. I covered this in part three of this series. Um, don't worry too much about Lambda right here. It's not essential to understand what's happening. Essentially, we're passing um, these contours and organizing them uh, based on a single parameter, which is going to be the x axis. So we're going to say x is equal to cv2 bounding rect x1. And what we have here now are a bunch of contours now organized. 
um, in a specific order. And I forgot my equal sign here. There we are. Now it works just fine. So we're going to iterate over those contours. For C and C and T S, we are going to uh, get the bounding boxes X, Y, uh, W, H. This is the X, the Y, the width, and the height, which is what's contained within the uh, CV2 dot bounding rect information. And with that information, we can specify some things. We want to just grab, like we saw in the last video, we want to just grab that main body of text. So that that main that main chunk of text. That's what we're interested in here. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to say if the uh, the height is greater than 200 and the width, the W, is greater than 250. So if it's a, a reasonable height and a long width, if that's a contour of that size, then that's probably going to be our main body text. So for that, what we want to do is we want to grab it. So what we're going to do with that is we're going to draw a rectangle around the main image, rect angle, there we go. We're going to draw it around the main image and it's going to be on the X, Y. So we get the right coordinates for everything. And then finally, we're going to specify kind of the shape of it. So X plus Y and Y plus the height. So we're going to basically define the, the contours of the, the line that we want, the box that we want to draw on the image. And then we're going to specify the color of the line for the box. And this is going to be a, a just basic run of the mill green. And this is going to allow us to then draw that onto the image. And let's go ahead and see what that image now looks like with this, hopefully one single square drawn. So we're going to do CV2 dot I am right. And we're going to write, specify where we want this object to be. So we're going to say temp backslash sample uh, boxes. So this is going to be our new image which now has the bounding boxes drawn on it. And let's see what that looks like. And I figured out the problem here. I have a W here instead of a, or a Y there instead of a W, which should be the actual height. Now when we re-execute everything, we will notice that when we open up our sample underscore boxes, we now have the entire main body of the text extracted, including the footnotes. This, however, is not part perfect, but let's go ahead and take a look at what this image would look like OCR versus the original image with no pre-processing whatsoever. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, let's say OCR result original is equal to, and here we're going to be using PyTesseract, which we're going to say PyTesseract image to string, and we're going to pass in our base image up here. And then let's print off OCR result underscore original. This is with no pre-processing whatsoever. And we're going to notice that we've got things looking good but not great. Notice here we've got these scriptural allusion or quotation or uh, references in the left hand column kind of throwing OCR so OCR off. We also still have the footnote down at the bottom. We've got all this data up here at the top. We don't want to see all of this. So instead what we want to do is we want to do some pre-processing that we've already done. So now let's go through and do the same thing with our now modified section. Now how can we ext extract just that section? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to create an object called an ROI, which is going to be the base image, but it's going to be the base image cut off at a certain area. And that cer certain area is going to be the bounding box that uh, is assigned to all of these kind of parameters. So Y with the height of, um, with its height, and then X colon X plus, and this is going to be the width. So essentially the, the chief area of our of our main body text. And I made a mistake right here. I didn't do a plus sign. I did a colon. Now this should work just fine. And now when we print off OCR result new, what we're going to be OCRing is just the thing that falls within the bounding box. 
And what we have here is just the bounding box and these footnotes, now all kind of OCR. But notice that we still have some extra stuff. We've got the stuff that falls up at the, the top area here, which we might not want, but we also have um, kind of the footnotes down here, which we definitely don't want. We're trying to extract the main body. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to use a horizontal line in this image to separate the footnote from the main body text and then OCR each individually so that you can contain the appropriate metadata as separate types of text. That's gonna be it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below. And as always, thank you to my Patreon supporters. Uh, and if you feel like you get a lot out of this channel, please do consider supporting it via Patreon. I keep everything free for all so that everyone has access to the same resources.